So welcome to today's session about job interviews and everything that you need to know to do really well when you're called in for an interview. My name is Elena, Elena Muller, and um, these are my LinkedIn and WeChat details. So if you want to connect, would love to connect with you in those media also. So the overview for today is that we'll be looking at different interview types as well as getting an insight into interviews and how they actually work. Um, what's being measured? So when you go for an interview, what are people actually looking for and what you need to be made aware of so that you can prepare appropriately, but also do your best at that interview. What can you do? So what can you do to prepare? What can you do to predict the questions and how that interview will go? And what can you do afterwards as well? And my top tips for all types of interviews, be that an interview that's face to face or an interview over the phone or even an interview online as we are seeing more and more of those in recent times. And finally, we're going to look at interview questions as well. So that can help you know what are the most common interview questions and what you can do to prepare for those. All right. So the first part, we look at interview types. I would say that for interview types, there are four main ways of, of having an interview. The first one would be a face-to-face -face interview. That means you go into a room, there's two or three people from the company or the HR uh, company interviewing you about the job. The second type would be where uh, people will call you. So generally someone from HR or human resources from the company will call you or even the hiring manager. They may call you to ask a few questions and that's so that they can decide who they're going to invite for a face-to-face -face interview. Obviously not everyone that gets a phone interview will get a face-to-face -face interview, but uh, they're trying to reduce the number of people that they deem competent or appropriate to come in for a face-to-face -face interview. So it's very important that you are well prepared for a telephonic or phone interview so that you can do your best and be invited for that all important face-to-face -face interview. The other type of interviews that I'm seeing a lot of is an online interview. So for online, there's really two types. The first one is the time delayed interview, which I'm going to talk to you about in quite some detail because there's actually no one on, on the other side. You are there, all, all that you can see is your own face and then you have to answer a few questions. That, um, the feedback that I get from students and migrants, that is the hardest one for them to both prepare, but also to do well at. And the last type is the online interview that's done sort of via Zoom or via Skype or via Google Hangouts, where you can see the interviewer um, and you are on the other side and they, they are on, um, on the other side as well, so that um, you two can see each other, but it's not done in the same room. All right, that's my question to you right at the beginning of this session. You know, how confident would you be at an interview now with what you already know? I'm hoping that by the end of the session, you will be much more aware and much more informed about things you can do beforehand to ensure that your interview goes really well and you can get that job offer that you really want. So what's being measured? At an interview, um, most people think that you're being measured for your ability to actually do the job and that's true. But there's other things that the interviewer is measuring as well. So there is the objective factor that you're being measured in an interview and that would be, can this person do the job? The second thing that would be measured would be the care factor. Like, do you care enough about the company, about the people that you're serving in that company, as well as the, the mission and values of the company to um, stay there? Or are you just using that position as an opportunity for you to move in your career, say, after a couple of months 
or so. And then there's the subjective, the subjective uh, measure, if you like. The subjective one, there's nothing that you can control, actually, because you don't know who the team is that you may be working with, and you don't know who the manager is going to be. And what normally happens is that people may, um, you know, as you come into that interview room, people may be reminded of people that they already know that you look like, or uh, situations that they've been through. Um, and that may go for or against you. That's really the power of you know, first impressions and how people will make decisions based on that first two minutes of meeting you. That's why it's really important to create a very strong first impression. But this subjective um, measure, if you like, there's really nothing much that you can do about apart from you know, preparing and doing your best. You have no control over if your personality is not what they're looking for for that team environment um, or if for some reason the, um, the hiring manager doesn't like some aspect of your personality. That's who you are and um, there's nothing you can do about it. So I would say you really need to focus on those two first aspects and that's the bulk of what I'm sharing with you today. It's how, you know, how can you ensure that you are prepared and you are showing that you really care about the company and that you really care about the job that gets done by them and also the role and the, the, um, in the position of employment that you're applying for. Secondly, the objective measure. So this is looking at job requirements. You know, what did they ask for in the position description in the job ad? And how can you make sure that you are addressing those very strategically and very well so that the hiring manager can go yes definitely this person can do the job that's the objective definitely they care about the company and they know what we are all about and they, there is an alignment between who they are as a person and what our company does and the third one is yes definitely they're going to be a great addition to our team i want to hire this person and that's when you get an offer when we look at what you can actually do, because some things in an interview process, lots of things actually are outside of your control, but a few things you can actually work with, or you can actually do that pre-work to give yourself your best chance at getting a job offer. And the things that you can do can be divided into three main areas, which are predict, you can prepare, and you can present. And I'm going to talk in more detail about each of those aspects so that you know what you need to do to give yourself the, the best chance. So what can you do to predict? Um, well, firstly, obviously you get the job ad and the job description. If you have both, that's even better. But you would be looking at what are the requirements of that position? Now, you would already have done that work when you wrote your cover letter. The fact that you're being invited for an interview means that obviously you've already proven in some way in your cover letter and in your resume, looking at your current and past experiences that you can do the job. That's why you're being invited to come to an interview. So it's really important that go through that, that job ad and that position description again and try to predict the questions that are going to be asked based on those requirements. So for example, if they asked you about, you know, uh, must be someone um, who can work in a team. That's very common that companies will ask for team players because it's so important in today's workplace environment. So if they ask you for, you know, must be a team player in the job ad, well, there's a high chance that they will ask you something like, tell me about a time when you had to work in a team, what was the situation, what did you do, and what was the result? So it's really important that you identify what questions you may be asked and that you start to prepare your answers to those. Now remember that an interview is always a very uh, stressful, for, for many people it's a very stressful time and um, 
people are sort of in high alerts, they're worried about, you know, the stakes are high, you really want that job. So the more that you prepare, and I would say, you know, try to predict those questions and try to think about the answers and even practice, you know, with your friends or, you know, maybe a partner who can help you because you really want to get those questions really well answered so that you can, uh, when it gets to the interview and it's real, you've already practiced, you've already prepared, and that's really going to help you as you do that. All right, so now looking at what can you do to prepare? Um, and preparation is very much linked with how much the company will um, perceive you as caring about them. And when I say caring, it's really that companies want someone to work there, that it's more than a job. You know, there is an alignment between who you are as a person, your values, what you want to do with your life, and what this company is doing. Obviously, I totally understand that some of you may be, you know, getting jobs, and I would say any job because you need to pay the bills. I totally respect that, and I totally understand that. Um, I've been there myself, and I know how it is. Now, what I'm saying here is when you are applying for jobs that are professional jobs aligned with your own profession, with your own experience or your degree or both, you really want to be selecting companies to apply for and jobs to apply for that you actually care. Like you wouldn't be applying for a position that you hate or an employer that you really despise. That, that's not wise to do because the, the chances are that even if you got an interview, you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't come across as enjoying that or wanting to be there. And that is very easy as an employer and someone who interviews people regularly. It's very easy to see when people haven't done their preparation, they don't care, it's just a job. And companies will steer away from that type of employee. Now, so looking at what you can do to prepare for that all important, you know, professional job interview that you've been invited to. The first thing you need to research about the company. Now, when I say research about the company, it is not enough to go to their website, have a five minute look around, and then, um, you know, make a few notes and go, yeah, I've, I've got it, I've prepared, I've researched about the company. No, no, no. I want you to, you know, go to their website, look at every page on their website, you know, look for any news about them, look at their social media, what are they posting about. You need to really be able to get a picture about that company, not just one aspect of it. It's very common, um, I used to interview a lot, and it was very common and very easy to see when people hadn't done any research at all about the company, which really, it's quite disappointing as an employer, but also just puts that person sort of behind the other candidates who may have done more research. So I really want you to spend, you know, I would say at least two to three hours. Um, I've spoken to, to a, a student recently and he got a job and he said that he, he researched eight hours about that company, which is an incredible amount. Um, obviously, there was a lot of information available about the company, which is great, but also he went into the detail to look at, you know, who worked there, um, who was going to interview him, which really is the next point, which is you need to know who's interviewing you. Now, normally companies will send you a, um, an interview request or they will call you and, and invite you to come to an interview. It's really important, if you can, um, to know how many people will be interviewing you as well as who will be interviewing you. There's two reasons for that. The first one is that mentally, you want to be prepared to you know, come into an interview and there's three people or one person or two people, however many there are. Uh, that will help you mentally to prepare for that interview. But also, if you know um, you know, that say that there's two or three people there and you can, you know, check their LinkedIn profile, that would be a good idea because you can start uh, painting a picture in your mind about, you know, who those people are and some of the things that they may be interested in or points in common that you may have with them. That's really important. 
um, because you know, in an interview being a place where everything is so up in the air, uh, things are so out of control, you really want to have as much information as you can uh, to prepare yourself for that, for that moment. So definitely research about the company, thorough research, um, check everything you can, but also about the interviewers, if you can, and if you were given their names, um, some companies do disclose that so that you can uh, prepare better. Cool. Now, there's the issue of evidence, guys, and I know I talk about evidence a lot because it's so important. See, evidence will help you um, get an interview, and then evidence will also help you um, get a job. And this is because once, see, employers, they're thinking in their mind, can this person do the job all the time throughout the interview process? Because obviously they want to get the best candidate that they can to do the job that they have available. So I really need you to think um, about not just what you can do, but what can you show to prove what you can do. This is needed because it's not enough to say, oh yes, I've got teamwork skills. The employer is going to ask, no, what can you tell me about that? When have you demonstrated that skill? What have you done in the past? Which teams have you been part of? So it's really not enough just to say, yeah, I've done that, without one or more examples to support your claim. So my strategy for you, which I think um, works really well, I use that myself when I go for, for interviews. Um, I don't interview for jobs anymore, but I do do a lot of pitching for different projects and things through my business, Time Makers Consulting, and I do do that. So I would recommend, you know, you need to think about five success stories. And those stories, obviously, they need to be real. So they need to be truthful, otherwise you will be caught and um, it's, it's really bad in a, in a workplace environment to lie or any environment for that matter. So think about five examples of things that you've done, achievements or things that you've done really well. For example, I mentioned about teamwork and I keep mentioning about it because it is so important and companies are really asking for that. So think about teamwork and try to think about a situation where you had to work in a team. Now, if it's a situation that it's quite straightforward, that's not as good. Try to think of a time when you had to work in a team, there was a bit of an issue, maybe an issue with the time frame, maybe an issue with the colleagues that you were working with, or maybe an issue about the subject or the topic that you had to do the work about. And I'm thinking here clearly about a project maybe that you've done at university. I would imagine that most of you would have done those. So think about a teamwork environment where there was a bit of a challenge and you overcame that. That's the story that I want you to tell. And when I say story, it doesn't mean you're inventing it. It just means there is a beginning so what the context was or the situation, then there is a task that got asked, then there was an action that you yourself took, and then there was a result. This actually, guys, is the STAR methodology. So when you're asked to share stories or things that you've done or ask for examples or evidence, it's really important that you use the STAR method to answering interview questions. So as I mentioned, you talk about the situation, then the task, then the action that you took, not that the whole team took, that you yourself took, and the result. Many people will remember to talk about the situation, the task, and the action, but they forget the result. So I really need you to, to craft and to write down these stories. Maybe one can be about you know, teamwork, one can be about conflict, one can be about a software that you used in the past and how you learned that and how uh, which functions you can use and which project you've used those functions in. But it's important that you know these stories and you, I would even recommend you write them down so that they stay front of mind for you, both to write uh, briefly in your cover letter, but also to remind you 
during the interview process. That's really important. The next thing that you can prepare and you should prepare before your interview is your questions. So it's very common that at the end of an interview, and be that a, a phone interview or a face-to-face -face interview, or even an interview that's done online, that they, you will be asked, do you have any questions for us? Now, many people, um, and I guess because interview is a very cultural relevant thing, which means that, a very cultural relevant process, which means that an interview here in Australia is very different to what an interview in Brazil or in China or in India or in Colombia or in Europe would be like. So I think it's really important that, um, and that's what I'm sharing with you guys, that you know what to expect at an interview here in Adelaide, South Australia. Very commonly, pretty much every time, people ask you at the end, do you have any questions for us? So it's very hard to think um, as you're going through that interview to be thinking about questions that you want to ask at the end. So I would recommend you prepare those questions as you're doing your preparation about the company, you prepare those questions. So maybe you're doing some research about the company and they mentioned a project that they have that's coming up. Well, write down a question about that project. That does two things. That shows that you're interested in what they are doing, but it also shows that you've done your research. So I think it's really important to have, you know, and I definitely recommend you take a notebook if it's a face-to-face -face interview, take a notebook with you so that you can have those questions already written down. That will also decrease some of your anxiety about going to an interview. The more you prepare, the less, the less anxious you'll feel and, and the more confident you'll feel as well. All right, the next thing I want to talk to, to you about is how you present at an interview. Um, a lot to do, as I mentioned before, a lot has to do with perception and how employers or anyone really that you come in contact with perceives you um, as being. So they may perceive you as being really professional, they may perceive you as being unprofessional or whatever and everything in between. Obviously in, a, in, a, in the context of a job interview, you really want to be perceived as being professional by being punctual, you know, by having any papers that you need with you, uh, by having that firm handshake, etc. So with perception, the other thing that I also wanted to mention is that Malcolm Gladwell, who's, who's a very famous author, he's written a number of books but in one of his books that's called What the Dog Saw, it's also one of my favorite books, um, he writes about the issue of perception, particularly in job interviews. And what he says is that um, judgments about people, do I like this person or not? Is this person trustworthy or not? Is this person professional or not? All of those judgments, um, which normally are purely based on perception, and we all do it, they are formed within two minutes of meeting a new person. What this means is you're coming into the interview room, within two minutes, the managers or the HR people or whoever's interviewing you, within two minutes they will decide, is this person a good candidate or not? Two minutes gives you time to come into the room shake hands if they're shaking hands, introduce yourself and sit down and the first questions get asked. That's it. You know, you're probably halfway through the first question. That's your two minutes. The issue of perception is really serious because if you don't use those first two minutes well and within two minutes they'll look at what? How you're dressed, how confident you come into the room, if you look them in the eye, if you have that strong handshake, if they are shaking hands, um, how you look at each person and say, you know, nice to meet you or whatever. But also, you know, are you shaking? Are you not? How, how are you coming in? Are you coming in with like lots of things and you, you drop them on the ground or whatever? So that's really important that you create that strong first impression. And that's the same for, you know, an online interview or a face-to-face -face interview or any other type. Now, 
when we're thinking about perception, I think it's really important that, um, and I've written, you know, some words on the screen, but it could be a number of them. Think about how you want people to perceive you or to judge you or to see you. So, for example, today, you know, I could have come in to, to do this webinar for you in my, you know, say my pajamas and my Ugg boots and without my hair done and with no makeup. What would be the perception? Well, I would say you'd probably watch maybe 20 seconds of it and you'd be like, this person has got no credibility. You know, what does she know about anything? If we're talking about being professional and I'm, I'm dressed, you know, inappropriately. So it's really important that you really think about what are some words, and I would say stick to three words, that you want people to perceive you. So I've written some here on the screen. So you have, you know, do you want to be perceived as professional or as approachable or as friendly or enthusiastic or unconventional or intense or mature or what? What's your objective in going for that job? I would say that most of you would want to be perceived as being, you know, professional and approachable and enthusiastic, maybe about the company. But it all relies on what type of job it is, um, what industry they are in. You know, if let's say someone was going for an aged care role, well, you probably want to look professional, but you also want to look friendly and caring, for example, or approachable. So it's up to you to decide how you want to be perceived and what your three words are so that then you can, you know, dress appropriately, come into that room appropriately and do your best in that interview. Moving on to look at interview questions, guys. So this is something that I get asked all the time. You know, what will people ask me? The truth is that it all depends on what the job is, what the job ad asked for and what are those position requirements. It also depends on, you know, who the company is, which industry they are in, and what their values, mission, and vision are. And you need to know that. But in regards to questions, there are four main types of questions that you'll be asked. The first one, as you can see here, is open-ended. Open-ended questions means questions such as, tell me a little bit about yourself, or what do you do in your free time? These normally are questions to see who you are as a person, what's your personality like and how, you know, why did you apply for this position? That's another open-ended question that you're probably going to be asked. Another one that I mentioned before and I mentioned again here, so important, you will be asked, what do you know about our company? And then you need to be able to explain that clearly to show your interest and the research that you have done. The second type of questions that you, are, you will be asked are technical questions. So think about the software or the type of skills that are highly technical related to your profession that that company asked for. Chances are they are going to ask you, you know, have you used AutoCAD? When? How? What, which functionalities do you know? Give me an example of when you have used MIOB, this is for accountants, or SAP. The next one is behavioral questions. So behavioral questions are those questions that probably are going to, to measure your ability to or when you have used your soft skills in the past. For example, tell me about a time when you have had to manage conflict. And then you need, to, you need an example for that to show your ability to manage, to manage it. The other, so that, there would be questions involving um, teamwork, conflict, it could be involving, you know, working by yourself, keeping motivated, um, you know, failing at something. How, how do you deal with failing at something? That question will always start with, tell me about a time when. So it could be, tell me about a time when you had to deal with conflict. Tell me about a time when you worked as part of a team. Tell me about a time when you tried to do something and failed. And then you need to answer those questions always with the STAR technique structure. So that means situation, S, task, what did you do, action, and what was the result. Always obey that same structure to answer it. 
There's lots of videos and lots of information that you can find about the STAR technique. And when I mentioned before about those five success stories, that, that's why you're writing them for. That's why you need to remind them so that when the behavioral interview or behavioral questions come, and you should have at least three or four in an interview um, that are behavioral, you know how to answer them. Good. The next one is hypothetical. Now, hypothetical questions, they are not that common, but they still will get asked at an interview. So these would be questions that they'll ask things like, what would you do if you didn't get on with your manager? What would you do if you had to deal with a client who was angry? What would you do if... So in those questions, it's assuming that you have never been in that situation and it's asking hypothetically, what would you do in those situations? So you need to answer those, not using the STAR technique, that would be wrong, but using the structure. If I had to deal with an angry customer, for example, I would blah, 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 blah. And then what would you would do? What they're looking for um, in hypothetical questions is particularly wanting to know your train of thought, how your logic goes to deal, in a, to deal with a situation that you have never been into before. The most common interview questions, you know, and again, people ask me that a lot. Uh, I would say these are the most common interview questions. And as you will notice, there is a mix between questions that are open-ended, behavioral, hypothetical, um, or even technical. So for example, and for each of those questions, you can certainly look um, online or read books or talk to different people about how to answer them. But I'll give a brief overview about each of them for you. But you know, if you have a real interview coming up, I would definitely say, you know, by all means, practice with these questions, but also predict the questions that you're going to be asked by looking at the job ad and trying to guess what those questions are going to be, because that's a better way to, to prepare for an interview. So looking at the first one, tell me a little bit about yourself. For that question, um, the interviewers are really just wanting to know more about you as a person, as an individual, but also it's always in relation to the job. So it's not enough to say something like, yes, I'm Elena and I'm very excited to be here. I enjoy going on hikes and traveling and I also enjoy spending time with my dog, Lily. That's not enough because that, while it's, it's a nice enough answer, it's, there's nothing related to the job or the company or who they are. So a better answer would be something, let's say if I was applying for a, I don't know, for a, a company, for a job in the aged care industry, okay? In that sense, I would say something like, hi, I'm Elena, great to be here today. I was, um, I've been in Australia for 15 years, I have studied teaching. Um, I was raised by my grandmother, so I have a lot of respect for older people. And that's why when I saw this teaching position or training position within an aged care environment, I got really excited because it combines two things I'm really passionate about, which is teaching or training, but also serving the older population. Something like that. So while you would be talking about yourself, it's always in relation to the job, the industry, and the people that you're meeting there and then. The next one is, why did you apply for this position? So for this one, it's really testing you to see if you can recall very well what those requirements of the job were, and if you are able to, to sort of highlight the main points why you're there today. So I think you could really replace that question with, why are you here? So when you think about, you know, everything that you've done in your life that has led to that moment sitting across the table from that interviewing panel, why are you there? How come you're there? And think about, you know, the feeling when you saw that position advertised 
and what made you apply. So I would say you really focus on three main points to answer that question. So it could be something like, well, I have applied for this position because I could see a very good fit between your requirements and how and my previous experience and how I can fulfill those requirements. So that was the main, the, the, the first reason. Secondly, I mean, everyone knows about the reputation of your company. You know, remember to always mention the name of the company. So everyone knows the reputation of your company. And um, in fact, you have, you have got a couple of awards for best place to work in South Australia. So who wouldn't want to work here? And thirdly, I'm really passionate about, I don't know, helping older people or, you know, serving the people that you serve or working with blah, blah, blah. So you need to, I think you, it would be wise to talk about your skill set and what they ask for, then something about them that really attracts you, and then something about the role that really attracts you. I think that would be a good structure to answer that question. Uh, just remember that most of your competition, so most of the other candidates that will be there, it's never just one person interviewed. It's always a number of people uh, between three and five per role advertised that will actually get an interview. So remember that your competition, they're probably not going to prepare as much as you are going to prepare. So that gives me confidence about your ability to progress further and get that job offer. Okay, now what do you know about our company? Again, as I mentioned before, this is your chance to really showcase the, the knowledge that you have about the company, the, this research that you have done. And it's okay if you want, like I, I do that normally, you will get, you know, you will bring with you, say, you have a notebook with you, and then in here, you have some information about your research. Now, I don't recommend you read from it like that, because no one wants to see the top of your head, but it's okay to sort of refer to it. So say, look, I've done a bit of research, and um, I found that your company was founded on this year and there's these many staff members and then you have these different areas that you operate in and also have these projects coming up. I think that's really wise to, to show that you have done your homework, but also be able to speak with confidence. I have seen people in interviews before that they have memorized everything about the company but the problem is that they spoke really anxious and they spoke like robots. So they're sort of like, yes, you were, you were founded in 63 by a group of widows that were looking at improving lives of um, other widows that had nowhere to live. And, you know, it just sounds really um, off and not welcoming and friendly at all. I guess one of the main things I have to tell you is that, you know, remember to smile at an interview because it will relax you, but it also gives that good um, first impression for the interviewers as well. Okay, what are your values? What are our values? So the company here is wanting to know that you have researched about them and you know what their values are. And then the second part of that question is how do they resonate with you? Or, you know, why, why do you care about our values? So, for example, if the value was, of, or if the values was, I don't know, integrity, honesty, and respect, for example, then you'd say, look, your values are, again, use your notebook, your, va your values are integrity, honesty, and respect, and I think they resonate with me, particularly the integrity one, because blah, 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 and then you need to give a reason or an example of why you care about that. Okay, the next one is about salary expectations. And I get lots of questions about that one because people don't know what to say, particularly for someone that has not worked in Australia in their nominated profession before, or students that are coming out of university and looking at start their career. So I get asked, you know, what, if, what do I say if I get asked that? Okay, this is what you need to do. First, you need to have some idea about how much the marketplace is paying for jobs with those skills. And you will find that out by looking at websites like, say, Glassdoors would have some information about it. 
Um, you can talk to maybe friends or people that you know that are already working in that industry and I'm sure they would be happy to share some ideas about uh, you know, what do you answer, what's, what, what's being paid. But the other hint as well for salary expectations is you never say something like, well, my expectation is 45,321 and 50 cents. It's never an exact number, obviously. It's always a range. And by range, I mean, you would say something like, well, I'm expecting something between 45 and 55 or 55 and 65. You always give them a range. And you do that because you want, um, let's say if you say 45 and 55, and they, they had in their budget to pay, say 52 for that role, then that's fine. It's what you asked, it's within the range that they want to pay for. So that's no problems at all, you're fine. But if you had said, ah, I want 46, they would say, that's okay, we will make 6,000 on the budget that we have, so we'll be better off, and we'll pay this person, they're happy with 46. So I would say, always give a range of about $10,000. That's really important. And this is obviously on the yearly salary, not the monthly. <laughs> Um, where are you working at the moment? Now for this question, if you are working in a job that's not related to your profession or what you want to do or the job that you're going for, it's still important that you answer that question and you, you mention, you know, well, I am working in a restaurant or I am working in hospitality or I am working, you know, driving an Uber or whatever it is. It's important that they know that you are prepared to work and work hard to sustain yourself, even if it's not related to your profession. The next one is, why are you considering leaving your current position? And that one normally, um, if you answer no, are you working at the moment? Yes, no, whatever. If you say yes and you explain where you're working, then that question will come. So they say, why, why are you considering leaving? For that question, it's really important that you do not say anything bad about your current employer. So it would be very important to say something like, look, I've been working in a restaurant for the last year and a half. Um, I love working there, it's a good team. I get on well with my manager. I've learned a lot about customer service, however, um, it's not my field of expertise. It's not related to my degree. So I'm considering leaving um, and they are aware of that as soon as I can find something more closely related with what I've studied, such as this opportunity that we are here to discuss today. Um, the next one is what sets you apart from the other candidates. Now, you really need to think that every candidate that they are interviewing has the requirements of the role. All of them have, otherwise they wouldn't have been invited to attend the interview. So if everyone has the requirements, your answer cannot be, I would like, um, I set myself apart from the other candidates because I fulfill the requirements. That's not enough. So it really needs to be related to the search or the research that you have done about the company, uh, their values, their mission, why do you care? So in the end, it's actually quite similar to the why did you apply for this position, I guess, uh, in a sense, because you would be using some of those aspects to answer that. So what sets you apart from the other candidates? I'm really passionate about this industry. Um, even if I'm not successful today, I will continue to apply within this industry for these type of jobs because I just love programming. I will program even uh, during the weekend. I learn about it all the time. So to be able to work in that field would be just amazing. I think what sets me apart from other candidates is really my passion for this specific area that, that you have available today. Something like that, that would really show that you have the skills, but you're actually really passionate about it. Um, and the other candidates may not be as passionate or as enthusiastic about the role as you are. That's just an example. You need to decide 
based on your own experience, skills, and why do you care about that company? How to better answer that question? The next one is about strengths. Now, lots of people get stuck on that or they'll mention too many strengths. I would say focus on maybe two or three strengths. And again, they need to be linked back to the requirements. They can't be, you know, if the requirements are attention to detail, teamwork, and, um, you know, ability to use SAP, for example, your strengths need to somehow align back to those. So you would say, well, my strengths are that I work really well in a team, as I've mentioned before. Um, that's something that I'm passionate about. I've done it in the past. I would really like to do it again. Um, hence, I'm here. But also, I'm really organized. So I'm able to both um, help people in what they have to do, know what needs to be done, and then ensure that it gets done. Something like that. You couldn't say, my strength is that I speak really well in a public environment. I can do public speaking really well. That's, if that's a strength, great, good for you. But if it's not related to the job, what's the point of that answer? So just make sure that your strength, uh, because we all have strengths and we all have lots of strengths, but you need to choose some of them to mention that are related to the job, the industry, the type of work, that you will be doing in that company. And then there's the next one. What's your weakness? Which many people struggle with again. Weakness, you want to mention one. And within your weakness, you want to mention something that is not related to the job ad. So you wouldn't say something like, my weakness is that I have no experience in this area. Don't say that, yeah? It would be better to say something like, Maybe if it's, you know, they want attention to detail, they want SAP, they want teamwork, then your weakness could be, look, I, I love people. I love being around people. I'm a bit of an extrovert. So for me, it's a bit hard to work by myself. I do much better in a team environment. However, I've been training myself to get more focused and be able to do work by myself. And that has been going well. So you want to show that you are aware of what you're not too good at. Um, and you're doing something to make it better. But also, your weakness cannot be related to the job requirements. Otherwise, you're sort of disqualifying yourself from that job. Good. Um, how well can you use a system? Then you need to be able to provide information about what you have done in the past and how you can use a certain system that they ask for or a software, whatever. Um, then you are very likely to get a behavioral question. So tell me about a time when you, and what would you, what would you do if? So behavioral and hypothetical questions. Hypothetical question, which is number 13 there, are very hard to predict because they actually could be quite random um, and quite unexpected. So it's hard to prepare for those. The behavioral one, which is number 12, tell me about a time when, you can expect that and you can relate those that one straight back to the job requirements. So if they're asking for teamwork or initiative or um, being a team player or you know attention to detail, you should expect that it will come as a behavioral question in your interview and you need to be able to give the examples or the evidence of how you can do it. Now we start the next part of our webinar today to really talk about the different types of interviews that you may be invited to participate in. And each of those interviews, we're going to look at video interview, telephone interview, and face-to-face -face interview. And each of them, there's different um, examples and tips that I'll be providing you with today. So that depending on what you need, you can uh, adapt and prepare accordingly. All right, so looking at the video interview to start with, I have actually taken um, a screenshot from a real video interview and the information that that company has sent to their candidates to explain to them what they needed to do. And here is a copy, I've typed it, obviously I haven't um, 
just copy it across. I've typed it in. And this is what um, this company said. So if we look in the screen, it said, you know, we know these videos can sometimes feel a little strange, but do your best to relax, be yourself, and tell us why you'd be the perfect fit for the role. To complete the interview, you will need a video-enabled device or computer and roughly 10 to 15 minutes of your time. In practice, it would take a lot longer to prepare. Because you can re-record answers, I would say get at least, you know, spare at least an hour to ensure that's really well done. To help set yourself up for success, find a quiet space that's vital where you will not be interrupted and don't forget to turn your mute button off. Now, I am sure they put it in there because they would get quite a few answers or replies where they couldn't hear the candidate, which is actually quite funny to think of. Um, if you make a mistake, don't worry. You'll be able to play back and re-record should you wish before submitting your complete video interview. However, please note, you must be happy to submit one question before moving on to the next question as you will not be able to go backwards. So this email that got sent to a number of candidates for one particular position sort of outlines what companies are expecting in regards to a video interview. Now, this video interview, for example, is called a time delayed interview, meaning all that you can see is the question on the screen and your own face. For some people, that can be quite um, hard to do because they, cannot, they don't have that immediate feedback from the person on the other side. However, the more you practice, the better you get. So let's just highlight what the structure is for such an interview. This is an example, but that's generally how they work. And then we can look at some tips for you to do really well at it. So firstly, what will happen once you go into the, the system or you follow the link that they've sent you, the system will give you obviously a test audio and video to see that you know, you're happy with uh, the camera and how that's looking and you're happy they can hear you, etc. Then the interview will start. A question will appear on the screen. You will have some time to prepare. That time is set by the company but normally it's about three minutes. You prepare that and then you have time to answer. You record your answer. If you're happy with that, you move on to the next question. If you're not happy with that, you record again. Some companies, like the one I've just shown you, let you go back. Some companies you can only record once. So just be mindful of that. That's sort of the structure of how this works. Generally, there are six to seven questions. What I would say is, if there is a job that gets advertised, say, today, and it's going to close in two weeks' time, there is no point you doing your video interview and sending it off on the same day. It's better that you take your time to prepare, you know, think about the background, think about a number of things that I'll be sharing with you shortly, but think about all the different components, your answers, the job, really prepare for that. And then maybe it's gonna take you a couple of days or three days to be able to prepare for that. And then you record. Don't, don't rush to record and send it off because you really want your best, um, your best self to be shown in that interview. How you can practice for that? I would say, you know, find a job, like a random job that you could really apply for. And then you can practice, but you can use Zoom because you can record or Skype or even your phone. Record your answers, you know, come up with some questions, record your answers and then see how, how you look answering those questions. You know, are you looking at the screen? Are you looking down? Are you looking sideways? You know, is the background appropriately appropriate? What's going on? So you really want to practice those questions, even though it's weird and it feels a bit pointless. There's actually a lot of value in doing that. I've noticed with different students, the more we practice these type of things, the better they got when it was a real interview. Now, here are my top tips for video interview. Okay, so before your interview, 
there's a few things that you can do and that you should do to include to ensure that you stay calm and that you do your best at the interview and these are you know find a quiet place don't go somewhere where you know there's children playing that would be me with my children or where the children are you know mucking around and screaming and playing and laughing choose a quiet place be mindful of any noise around you like children pets or someone mowing the law whatever Ensure there's good lighting as well. You don't want to be, you know, speaking from a really like dark place and they can't see your face properly. Remove any distractions. And this is not distractions for you. This is distractions for the people who will be watching your video afterwards. So if there's too much stuff in the background, that can be quite distracting for the person watch, watching it. So be really mindful of what's behind you. Uh, have a strong internet connection, of course to ensure that um, the recording is good and, and it goes off well. Dress and, and prepare as if it was an in-person interview. So you really need to, you know, be dressed properly, professionally, have that strong first impression created to ensure that they, you know, uh, perceive you as being someone really competent that you are. Uh, the next thing is, you know, related again to distraction. So remo remove any clutter or any, you know, anything that would be distracting or anything that shouldn't be there from the background, you need to remove that. Arrange a professional background if you can. Um, make sure nothing inappropriate can be seen on the screen and have any plugins ready with, um, if it, you know, Zoom is going to be used. You want to, to ensure that it's ready to go um, and you don't want to be delayed um, or, or to spend extra time, whatever, because of it. So just be mindful of that. Obviously, the plugins aspect would be also for if you have any, um, if there is a person on the other side. Yeah, the time delayed, it doesn't matter that much because you are setting up the time that you want to do it. But in the case where, let's say, someone in Sydney is interviewing you online, uh, you really want to be on time. So because of that, you really want to do any updates in your computer that you need before your interview. Otherwise, that may delay you. During the interview, this is what you should do. You need to be ready 10 minutes before at least to, you know, log in, dial in and be there on time. If you're rushing, that's going to make you more anxious and could make you um, actually sort of forget some of your answers. It's just adding extra stress that you don't need. Um, smile while you talk. That's really important to relax yourself, but also the people that are watching you. Even if there's no one on the other side, it's important that you remember to smile. Predetermine which points you want to get across with each interview. So if you're doing an interview and you know they're really strong on, I don't know, um, teamwork, reliability and honesty, then you want to imbue to those three points in your answers. So you know you want to mention examples about honesty or examples about reliability as you answer the questions. Have a salary range in mind, okay? There's a high chance you will be asked about salary um, and it's not enough to say, I'm happy with anything you want to pay me. That's not a good answer, okay? You need to do your homework and your, your work to get a salary range. Uh, look in the screen while you answer questions. It's not good if you're looking, you know, to one side to the other side. You need to be looking directly to the screen so that it can be perceived as, as looking the person in the eye. And in short, you're not slouching. You know, it's really important to be sitting up straight or standing um, so that you can give that really strong first impression. The, the other thing is what do you do after the interview? Look, if you're able to, it would be great to send a thank you note to your primary contact. So the person who has sent you the interview request or the people who have interviewed you if it's sort of an online interview where there is someone on the other side, it's important to send a thank you note. And that thank you note needs to go within three and 24 hours of the interview. You can't send that off after, you know, two weeks after the interview, that's too late. It needs to be within three hours to 24 hours. And that's really important. In that thank you email, you really want to reinforce your interest in the position as well. This is, um, now we move on to telephone interview and what you need to know about those. So they are a little bit similar to what we've discussed before, but they have some unique points as well. 
which are the main aspects that I want to share with you. So the first thing is the phone interview don't have as many questions as a face-to-face -face interview has. So I would say that these would be the main questions in a phone interview. Um, tell me a bit about yourself. We've already discussed that. Why did you apply for this position? Same thing. What do you know about our company? They're trying to assess your interest in them. And it's important that you come across really positive. In a phone interview, um, it's not, it, sometimes you answer your phone and you don't know who it is. And most of the times you'll be applying for lots of jobs, not just for one job. So it's really important that you remember who they are. Yeah, you can't go, sorry, where, where are you calling from? Which company? That's not good. That's a terrible first impression. So you need to remember who they are. A trick to do that, um, and I'll share that in the next screen, but a trick to do that is let it go to voicemail if you don't know the number that's calling you. And then, you know, once you hear the message, you know which company it is from, open up, you know, your laptop, the information that you have in front of you, like the job ad, and when you applied your cover letter, all the information that you have, and then you call them back with the information in front of you so that if they ask any questions, etc., that, you know, you may not remember, but they are in front of you, so you can ref refer to that. Um, other questions that they may ask, what are your values? Again, what are our values? So the company is asking about their values and, you know, how they relate to your own values salary expectations again, and if you're working at the moment or not. Some hints for your telephone interview. You know, ideally, the company would um, send you a, an email or a text saying we're interested to phone interview you. Would you know, tomorrow at 10 o'clock be suitable? And then you reply to that. Uh, but sometimes they'll just call you um, and you're not expecting. And this is really important to even in an expected phone interview situation to create a strong first impression. Look, I would recommend the following, you know, um, you need to remember which job it is. Um, it's very important to do that. So if you're applying for like 300 jobs, that's going to be really hard to remember them all. You could keep a, a spreadsheet so that you have them all listed, you know, job, position description, when did you apply, which company it is, everything so that you can at a glance see that i've seen many people do that it works really well if you're called unexpectedly i would never answer if i don't know the number i will not answer i'll let it go to voicemail um, because i want to avoid this sort of situation where you're going who and it just it's bad um, it's a bad obviously if you are home you know or if you have your laptop in front of you if it's not too noisy around you of course, by all means, answer it, you know, but if, you know, if you are in the middle of the supermarket, there's a child screaming close to you or, you know, there's announcements going, it's too noisy. Chances are you're not going to create a strong first impression. So I would say when ringing back, you know, if you let it go to voicemail, then ringing back, do so from a quiet spot so you don't have any distractions. And you also need to know the job description and the job ad and when you applied and what the job was so that you can create that really strong first impression. Face-to-face -face interview, and that's sort of the, the, last, the last part for today, it's looking at face-to-face -face interview. Again, reminding you that the main things that are being measured in a face-to-face -face interview are the objective aspect. Can you do the job? Can you fulfill the requirements of the job ad? But the care factor as well. Do you care enough about the company to stay there, to do your job well, to be reliable, to work really hard? And the subjective, are you going to be a good fit for the team? What can you do, as I mentioned before, and I mentioned again because that's so important, you know, research about the company, research about the interviewers, research about the industry, what's happening within that industry? Have there been any changes in legislation that's going to affect? Is there a big new project coming up that's going to affect? What are the driving forces around that industry and that company? You want to know that and have enough, done enough research about it before you step into the interview room. Now, my top tips for face-to-face -face interview are, 
This is what you can do before the interview, okay? Before the interview, make sure you know where the location is, okay? It's very uh, stressful if you get to the place, you can't find the building, then you would arrive quite stressed and you need to really um, sort of save, save yourself from being too stressed before the interview because the interview itself will be a situation that can be quite stressful and full of anxiety. So you really want to be calm and collected as you come into that building. So beforehand, you know, decide how you're going to get to that interview place. Are you going to take public transport? Which bus do you need to take? Are you taking the tram? Are you driving? Where is their car park? So you need to decide and plan all of that before the day that you're supposed to be there. Prepare what you're going to wear the day before. Same thing, that avoids any confusion, any stress. Have a copy, you no, know, make a copy of your resume, your cover letter, the job ad, and take them with you. You may need to reference that. The other thing is always bring a notebook and, and you know, a pen with you. Make sure you've done your research on the company. You know, find out about the panel, the interviewers, if you can. Practice answering those interview questions. I cannot highlight that enough. And arrive, you know, 10 minutes earlier. It's okay, if you don't want to miss the interview, that's fine. Arrive like half an hour earlier, but don't go into the building. You wait, you know, at a coffee shop next, or you wait in your car. Like, don't go into the building earlier than, say, 15 to 10 minutes because you don't want to stress them. They are getting everything ready for your interview as well. During your interview, my top tips are smile while you talk. That makes a big difference, not just for you mentally, but also for the interviewers and how they see you. The other thing is you want to predetermine those three points that you want to come across in your interview and have that really clear. Maybe even you know write them down. What are the main focus that you want to, to to share at the interview, you know, about your skills or about some experience that you've had, etc. The salary range, you need that. You're probably going to be asked. Keep eye contact with the different people in the panel. So if you have three people in the panel, they will take it in turns to ask your question. So this person will ask one question, another question, another question. This person asked a question, I'm looking at the person as I'm answering that. Eye contact, eye contact, but I'm focusing most here. Then this person asks the question, same thing. Look at the person who's asked, look at this a little bit, look at that a little bit, but focus on this person. That's really important. I remember, you know, in one of my first interviews here in Australia, um, it was a panel interview. I was not expecting three people. I thought it was going to be just one that was really stressful. And then they were all taking it in turns to ask questions, which is something really normal, but I didn't know who to look at. So I ended up just looking at the person who was asking the questions and sort of ignoring the other ones, which is not good. Um, ensure, that's why I mentioned, you know, keep eye contact with all the people in the panel. Ensure you're not slouching, okay, in your chair. Uh, the other thing, the other trick too is keep your hands on the table. Don't put your hands on your legs because that will bring your whole posture down and you'll probably be slouching. If you don't understand a question, it's okay to ask for clarification. So you could ask, you know, could you please repeat that? Or I'm not sure I understand that question. Could you explain that further? That's fine to ask. It's better to ask for clarification than to answer the, the question that they didn't ask. And after your interview, the same applies. Send a little thank you note to your primary contact and reinforce your interest in the position. Now, you're probably asking, what do I write? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's an example of a thank you note that you can send. So you would have, you know, the, the title and the surname of the person you're writing to. You would say something like this. Obviously, you'd be changing, you know, the, the type of job and the company name. Um, maybe add some information about, you know, what you enjoyed about them or about the company. And then um, these you can probably keep as it is. Thank you and your name and surname. As I mentioned, it's vital that this thank you note goes via email within three hours of your interview and 24 hours. If it's later than that, it's too late. OK, 
okay? It's really important. And just some bonus material that I found that may interest you. There are some really good TED Talks to watch before job interviews. Now, I don't say you watch them, you know, half an hour before your interview, but I think as you prepare for your interview, you, um, you watch them as well because there's some really good tricks, uh, some really good tips and some really good information to keep you calm mostly and do it to do well in a job interview. Well, thank you so much for watching this. I get really excited talking about things that may help you. And I do hope that you can very soon be attending different interviews and get in, be successful at getting a job offer. All the best. Thank you so much.